Hi everyone, it's Lisa. So I'm sure many of you know Magnolia's Bakery in New York City and they sell the best banana pudding ever. They actually opened up a shop in DC, but as soon as they opened up, they shut down because of COVID. They actually have their banana pudding recipe online. I decided to make some for my friends and my family, and they actually really liked it. My friend told me that I should start selling it, and honestly, making the pudding was super easy, didn't cost too much. At this point, I've been selling for nine weeks, and I only sell on the weekends, and I can say that it's pretty much a success. I'm definitely making a little extra cash, and just in case any of you guys want to try it out, I'm going to show you step by step how I did it and my personal experience and what I've learned. So without further ado, let's get into the video. So first you're gonna go into Instagram and create an account. I already made an account, but I'm gonna make a second account just to show you guys what I did. So just create a username. I did Lisa's Banana Pudding because that's all I'm selling. And then complete the sign up. Next go to your profile and add your profile picture. This was the very first photo I used for my account and I kept it like this for a few weeks and it's honestly pretty childish and ugly, but that's okay. And then I added my first photo. It's a product photo, which is what people are gonna look at to know what they're buying from you. I added the location. And then in the comment section, I like to add hashtags just to reach a larger audience in my area. And in the profile section, I added my name and a small bio to describe what my account and business is about. A few weeks later, I changed my profile picture to this and a couple more weeks later, my friend created this profile picture for me and it became my logo and brand image. This is the account that I currently have. You can see that there are a couple posts and here are all the reviews from my customers. I asked them to tag me in their stories. This is a great way to reach a larger audience. I've also been trying different flavors for the pudding just to add variety to my menu. So far, I've done red velvet and Oreo and I'm still thinking about future flavors like peanut butter and banana, peanut butter chocolate chip. I also did a giveaway at one point and I doubled my followers just by the giveaway alone. So now I'm gonna be talking about my order forms. I use Google Forms for this. I already have a form made for my business, but I'm just gonna be creating a new one just to show you guys exactly what I did. Here I'm opening a new form and I added the title, Lisa's been in a pudding. I searched in Google Pictures cartoon pics of banana and I found this photo, so this is going to be my header image. I also changed the theme color to yellow just because I make banana pudding. And then I changed the background color and there are also a few font styles you can choose but I stuck with the basic. And now you're going to add a form description just to introduce who you are, why you're selling, and what your intentions are. So here I created a very short description of everything I just said. And then below that, I added the technical details like the pickup location, pickup date, sizes and prices, payment, deadline to order, and contact info in case they have questions. I added a few order questions for people to fill out. I also made all the questions required with this tab. In this tab, you can see the responses and you can click on this green square, which is the Excel spreadsheet for all the responses that you get. You can also delete all the responses after every week of sales. Now I'm gonna go into the finances. So on the left here, I include my expenses, the things that I need to buy to make my pudding. And then I also include the date and the amount and I sum it up and create a total. And then on the right side are my order forms. I scratched out the name and contact information for privacy reasons. The expenses and the total amount that I use every week is different every single week. And at the bottom of this, I like to keep a total amount of how much money I've made and then the net gain, which is basically the total amount of money I made minus the total amount I spent in the expenses section. On the very right column, I include how many cups I sold. And as you can see, every week is different. I'm gonna show you guys how I make my pudding. I start off with a crap ton of condensed milk. I use one can per batch and I make about three to five batches per flavor. So yeah, I'm just adding the condensed milk into this pot that I have. 
and now I added a few cups of water and I'm blending that with my electric mixer. Now I'm adding the vanilla jello instant pudding and I'm gonna just mix that in with the electric mixer. I'm just gonna let this set for about up to five hours. Okay, it's been a few hours and now I'm setting up my electric mixer. And I let it run until it forms stiff peaks like you can see now. Normally while that's running, I like to prep my bananas. I go through maybe like 50 bananas or more per week. So it's just constant peeling, constant cutting. Now that the whipped cream is done, I transfer it into this other huge bowl that my mom bought me recently. It's freaking huge, like I think they use it to make kimchi. So I add all the heavy whipping cream and then the jello that set for a few hours, I also transfer that in and then I mix it up and stir really well. And as you can see, I've just mixed it completely together and now I can start assembling. So the first layer is cream. I just spread that out on the bottom of this container. Before, I was using a turkey roasting pan that my friend let me borrow, but I gave it back to her. And when I was trying to buy my own, I just saw how expensive they were, and I, it was definitely not worth the money. And at first, I felt weird about using these plastic containers, but honestly, it's kind of genius. I cleaned them very thoroughly before I used them, obviously, and they can hold a lot of pudding, and they store perfectly in my fridge, and they also have a lid, so I can stack things on top if I need to. But now you can see me layering the vanilla wafers and bananas. and you can just see me stacking and layering. This took me about two hours. Like I said, it's very repetitive work that doesn't require a lot of thinking. <laughs> and for the Oreo flavor, I change up the cream by adding cacao powder. And for the Oreos, I'll just layer the cream, Oreos, and bananas over and over, just like I did with the classic. And this is what it looks like. So I usually make the pudding overnight, and then the next morning, I'll scoop out the pudding into the cups. I weigh every single cup on this mini food scale so that everyone gets about the same amount. And as you can see, I'm scooping the classic and the Oreo, and it just takes me about 30 minutes. And eventually, I finish, I label the bottom with the flavors, and then I keep it in my fridge until it's ready for pickup. So these are the kind of messages that I send to my customers when they submit an order form and purchase my pudding. So if they've submitted a form but they haven't paid me yet, I'll usually send a text like this where I introduce myself and then thank them for ordering the pudding. I'll ask them to Venmo me and then mention that I'll send a confirmation text with the pickup location later in the week. And after they've paid me, I'll send them the actual text confirmation, which includes the location. So I'll just thank them for ordering my pudding again, include their name, include the date and time, just in case they've forgotten. And then after they've picked up the pudding, I'll ask them to follow my Instagram so that they can tag me in the stories and I can see them. This is how I've managed to sell more pudding because they kind of spread the message for me by tagging me in their stories. But yeah, this is the process of how I run my pudding business and I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys have any more questions about running my business or just questions about anything I've mentioned, just leave them in the comments below. But yeah, thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye!